Well, the CPAC summit was the source of controversy as critics of the Trump administration were taken to task. Veteran conservative writer and policy advocate Mona Sharon had to be escorted out under the protection of security guards for her comments. Take a listen. I'm actually yeah. going to twist this around a bit and say that I'm disappointed in people on our side okay. for being hypocrites about uh, sexual harassers and abusers of women who are in our party, who are sitting in the White House, who brag about their extramarital affairs, who brag about mistreating women. And because he happens to have an R after his name, we, we look the other way, we don't complain. Um, this, is, this is a party that was ready to um, endorse, the Republican Party endorsed Roy Moore uh, for the Senate in the state of Alabama, even though he was a credibly accused child molester. You cannot claim that you stand for women and, and put up with that. There was quite an interesting person. Hold there was on. quite an interesting person who was on this stage the other day. Her name is Marion Le Pen. Now, why was she here? Why was she here? Uh, she's a young, no longer in office politician from France. I think the only reason she was here is because she's named Le Pen. And the <laughs> Le Pen name is a disgrace. Her grandfather is a racist and a Nazi. She claims that she stands for him. <laughs> and, and the fact that CPAC invited her is a disgrace. You know, I, I will take good news wherever I can get it. First of all, I, so many conservatives yep. thrilled by what mm -hmm. Mona said, but also I actually heard some applause in the audience when <laughs> she said the truth, which was Le Pen was a Nazi. With us now from Capitol Hill syndicated columnist and senior fellow at Ethics and Public Policy Center, Mona Sharon. Let Thank me just for being start, on. Mona, by saying that William F. Buckley and, uh, I don't know, Bob Novak and a lot of people are smiling uh, in the heaven right now. Uh, that was, uh, quite a, th thank quite God. A, I was going to say it was extraordinary. Actually, uh, I know it took a lot of courage, but you just told the truth. Uh, talk, about, uh, talk about the reaction and the security guards that came up to hustle you off stage. Um, look, so many conservatives uh, feel the way I do about this administration, feel that this, uh, the association of Trumpism with conservatism is a complete mistake, that we, this is not what conservatism stands for. Um, and so I just wanted to say that simple truth. Just say that. I know when I hear other people say it, it gives me courage. It gives me reassurance. So I decided yeah. to just say it. Now, regarding the reaction, as you heard, there was some applause in the room. Um, and uh, But when I, when I left the stage, I was surrounded by quite a few security guards. And I thought at first that it was a joke. I, I thought, you can't be serious. But they were very serious. And, mm. uh, you know, I said, look, I, uh, they said, have you made your arrangements for your transportation and I said well I was just gonna uber home and they said well have you called the uber and it was all very intense and I said you know I left my coat in the green room and they sort of talked into their sleeves and said she left her coat in the green room you know <laughs> going to the green room uh, but look nobody approached me who was not um, friendly uh, as we were leaving the uh, convention center a couple of people with uh, CPAC lanyards around their necks even gave me the th thumbs up so you never know what will happen when you speak up yeah. what um, it, it has to be uh, not only disconcerting for you it just has to be depressing when you see people that you have known and I have known for years um, well, and I'll just say, like Matt Schlapp, who worked for George W. Bush, had a high position, and then you see Michael Steele uh, being attacked because he's black. We should have never picked him as our chairman because he was black. Um, and then Matt seems to justify that by saying, but Michael, you've been critical of Donald Trump. What do you expect? I mean, how, 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 yeah. how do we even There's respond to that? There's a, there is a, a tone of sort of sophomoric clownishness that's creeped into conservatism now. now last year, CPAC invited uh, Milo to be their speaker, and then at the last minute they had to withdraw the invitation. 
different reasons I won't go into. Um, but there is this this uh, ethic, this this mood of trolling the opposition. That if you can create liberal tears, then anything goes. And even to the point of inviting the granddaughter of Jean-Marie right. Le Pen, a, a Nazi, an anti-Semite uh, from France. And what was the point of inviting her? It was again to to create a response to to jab a, a needle in the eye of liberals, um, and uh, they think this is a game. It's but, but, not. But Mona, it's you know, not what, a game. What's, what's so fascinating? I was just saying it before. Not only was her grandfather a Nazi, and she says she embraces all of his positions. Her positions are distinctly uh, liberal. With with a, I guess you'd say with a big L. Uh, they, they, she, the National Front wants to nationalize industry. They want to right. have national health care. They want to reduce work hour weeks in France, uh, require uh, only 30 hour work weeks, which is like the worst thing in the world right. for France. But Joe, you're you're assuming that concern that this wing of what is being called conservatism cares about those traditional issues of the size and scope of government. They don't care about that. What gets their blood going is immigration, and that is why it was so contemptible that President Trump read that snake poem and said mm -hmm. this applies to all immigrants, yeah. all immigrants. You know, right. I, I was reflecting that you know, he he pointed out that the truck bomber, the tr the guy who killed people in New York City driving a truck who had been uh, an immigrant and uh, he, he made him stand in for all immigrants and I thought he no more represents immigrants right. than the shooter at Parkland High School represents all gun owners. Right. right. So I, I just wondering because uh, there seemed to be some discomfort on the set that you were sitting on on stage and you could hear people booing. What has happened? How has it gotten to the point where you were speaking some pretty basic truths? I don't understand why this has become so hard. Well, uh, the, there there are fewer and fewer people who are speaking up. I, even I was getting depressed and demoralized and uh, and feeling that what was the point after all? And uh, but since I said what I did, mm -hmm. there's been such an outpouring of support that I feel more than ever that uh, people who are who adhere to s basic. Uh, principles of dignity and integrity and the belief that we should should uh, stand up for honesty. Um, there are a lot of them out there and uh, and they just need a little encouragement I think. You know and what's so interesting Jim is the real booing started when she brought up Roy Moore's name. Yeah I, that I, is I, true. I, if I, you go back and listen what really was uh, was like yeah yes she, she crossed the Rubicon when she actually went after Roy Moore. Well, and what brings all these stories together, whether it's immigration or CPAC, and especially for Republican viewers, is that the world is changing. This isn't 1950s America. If you just look at it politically and practically, the population of white America is on the decline. You have a, a rise in the number of Hispanic voters each and every election. And so if you don't diversify, if you don't become something other than the mostly white party, it doesn't work long term. And then practically for businesses and for this country, if you're not getting uh, immigrants who can who know technology, who understand right. artificial intelligence, look what China's doing. China, if they eat our lunch on artificial intelligence and right. keep expanding which their reach doing. into Latin America, which right. they're doing, Africa, which they're doing, uh, and East Eastern Asia, which they're doing, that puts us at a massive competitive disadvantage. So this isn't just a short-term, pound-your-chest political issue. It has long-term consequences well, for the economy and for, I would say, for the Republican Party. And you know, Mona, I remember talking to George W. Bush in 1998. And in 1998, George Bush, 20 years ago, was saying the Hispanic population is growing in a way that demands that we reach out to Hispanics more aggressively and we get Hispanics voting for us. And what did Bush get? Like in his reelect, he got like 44, 45 percent of the Hispanic vote. It, it seems that Donald Trump's thinking and everybody else in CPAC thinks that they're running in 1952 America. Look, I think it is perfectly fair to have a debate about immigration. I think right. people who believe that we need to take a pause or who believe that we're not assimilating immigrants as well as we could, they have a good case to make and they deserve to be heard. 
But to treat it as a matter of crime, which is a complete falsehood, cr uh, immigrants are, are much less likely to commit crimes than native-born Americans. Uh, to treat it as a matter of xenophobia, it is just morally wrong. I don't think it's wrong to have a, have a civilized debate about immigration as long yeah. as you don't demonize people. Well, and the Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.